Hi, in this video we're looking at something called mole mass conversions, which is basically us converting between moles of a substance and mass. Now moles represent particles, a quantity. A mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. The mass, though, is how much the substance weighs. Uh, here on Earth we call it weight, uh, but a mass is essentially how much of the matter is present. And so the way that we can get between moles and mass is by using something called a molar mass. And so if you're unfamiliar with what a molar mass is, I'm going to use that quite a bit in the video. I do have another video that's on molar masses. I would maybe start with that video first uh, before you dive into this one. I do just want to start with something that actually my chemistry teacher uh, uses to introduce this topic, and that's uh, this nutrition facts label for Lay's wavy potato chips. Now, one of the things you'll notice toward the top is that it says serving size is an ounce, which is 28 grams, which is equivalent to about 11 chips. Which, by the way, I've tested this theory if it's possible to actually just have one serving size of potato chips. And um, science says no. It, it, you, you, you just end up eating way more. Um, this is also America, and so <laughs> we don't know our limits. Um, but the connection between these two, I think, is really interesting. What they're saying is that 20, 28 grams of potato chips, which is a mass, uh, is equal to about 11 chips. Now, about because all the chips are not identical. In fact, they're very different from each other if you look at them. Um, but what this is connecting is a mass and a quantity. And that's exactly what a molar mass does. Now, let me present this other uh, piece to this. Lay's, when they're making these chips, doesn't have someone who's there just counting out 11 chips per serving they are probably filling these bags by weight, by mass, and that's a much faster way to do it. And in chemistry, we actually physically cannot spend time counting out the particles that we have to measure. And so we have to rely on their mass. We have to weigh these substances in order to know how many particles of that substance are in the sample. So um, here's kind of our roadmap. Moles allows us to get between mass and particles but one of the things you'll notice is that the molar mass is what allows us to get between mass and moles for a substance. And so we're going to use that quite a bit in this video. So let's do a couple sample problems. This one says, what is the mass of 3.00 moles of H2? Let's figure out where we are on this little map here because we've got three things. It's giving us 3.00 moles of H2. So that means we're starting here. I've got 3.00 moles. And it matters that it's H2 if I'm going to mass because I'm going to need to use the specific molar mass to that substance. And so I want to go this way on my map. What that means is I do not need to use Avogadro's number if I'm just converting between moles and mass. I only need to use the molar mass, and that'll get me what I'm interested in, which it says, what is the mass? So this is where I want to end up here. This is my unknown. So how do I start this? Well, I start by writing the information they give me, the information that I want to convert. Um, this is 3.00 moles. And it's very important that you include the unit. A lot of times I find when students fall off the rails here, it's because they've started to drop the unit off of their math setup. They think it's kind of lame maybe, or it's time consuming. It's much more time consuming to get these wrong and then have to try to rework things. So go in and throw in the unit. In fact, what the heck, let's put in H2, because that's the substance we're talking about, and that's going to matter at this molar mass step. Now I want to multiply by a conversion factor. And what do you know? Molar masses are our conversion factors between moles and mass. That's the name. It makes sense. Molar mass, moles, mass. So moles of H2 is what I want to get rid of. And therefore, I have to divide by one mole of H2. But now my goal is to try to figure out, well, what is the mass of one mole of H2? In other words, what is the molar mass for H2? I pull open a periodic table. I find that hydrogen weighs 1.01 or 1.00795. 1.01 will do for this. I want to double it, though, because there are two hydrogen atoms per molecule. And so I end up with a molar mass of 2.02 .02 grams of H2O or H2. So here's my grams per mole. Do you see that? This whole fraction is the molar mass 
Um, but now I can cancel out moles of H2 and just have grams of H2. So I can do this in my head. Uh, 3 times 2 is 6, so 6.06 .06 grams of H2. So that means if something is calling, maybe a lab procedure is calling for me to use 3 moles of hydrogen gas, or maybe to produce 3 moles of hydrogen gas, I would uh, be looking to see if I've done that by checking the mass. That's what I can measure in the lab setting. And so I'm looking for 6.06 .06 grams of H2, and that'll be equivalent to 3 moles of H2. Okay, let's do another example. Uh, this says to convert 0.55 moles of CA3PO42 into grams. This is calcium phosphate, by the way. Um, if you're looking for how we figure out what the formula for that is, if this instead just said convert 0.55 moles of calcium phosphate into grams, you'd have to get the formula in order to know the molar mass. Um, well, this is giving us moles. So again, this is 0.55 moles, and I want to convert to mass into grams. So I want to go over here, x grams. I need to first figure out what the molar mass is, but let me get my setup going. 0.55 moles of Ca3PO42. I want to use a molar mass here with one mole underneath. So one mole of Ca3PO42. And then on top is going to be the actual mass that I calculate. In other words, what is the mass of one mole of this calcium phosphate stuff? Well, for this, we're definitely going to have to go to the periodic table. You're going to look up three calciums, two phosphorus atoms, and eight, two times four is eight, oxygen atoms. And that's going to give you the molar mass for this calcium phosphate stuff. Um, I think I remember this correctly. It should be 310.18 grams. We just happened to do that problem in class a few hours ago. So I, I think this is right. Uh, and I'll double check it before I post this. So if this is up, then it's right. Um, and what I want to do is just do 0.55 times 310.18. And that should get me the answer. OK, I got it. Calculator's telling me this, 170.599. Uh, again, you may have a different number here because you're using a different periodic table. And that would mean you have a different, slightly different number here. That's all fine. There's a range of acceptable answers. But uh, what I do want to make sure I have that matches is the number of significant figures. Here I've got two significant figures in the beginning, so that means at the end I just want to match with two significant figures. So this just simply gets rounded to 170. That's got two sig figs in it. And what's my unit? Well, I've canceled out moles. I'm in grams, so there's my unit there. 170 grams of Ca3PO42. So there's my answer. Now, if I was going in the opposite direction, what if I gave you mass and wanted you to, to convert to moles? I would just simply be flipping around this fraction here. I'd have one mole of calcium phosphate on top, and then 310.18 grams of calcium phosphate on the bottom. So it's actually pretty similar to mole uh, particle conversions. The only difference is we're not using Avogadro's number in this process. Now, one final question. Uh, this one you're going to want to make sure you do because this has us using the entire range of this map here. It says what amount of copper atoms, this is particles, particles, this is what I want uh, to calculate, but it says are in a 4.25 gram sample. So it's giving us a mass. This is a good problem uh, of copper. Copper's uh, molar mass, by the way, is uh, 63.55 grams per mole. Uh, that's just looking up the periodic table and finding copper. So let's set this up, because I'm going to go all the way from mass, using the molar mass to moles, using Avogadro's number to particles, in this case, atoms. So I'm going to use two conversion factors for this one, one for the molar mass, and then one for Avogadro's number. So I start with 4.25 grams of copper. I'm going to multiply by a fraction with grams of copper underneath so that it cancels out. Uh, that's where that 63.55 goes, 63.55 on the bottom. And that's per mole, so one mole of copper on the top. Now, if you look, grams per mole is still active here. Uh, it's just flipped around because we want to go in a different direction than the last two example problems. So grams of copper is canceled off or canceled out. Uh, one of the things that you want, may be tempted to do is drop an equal sign here. Don't do it. Put another multiplication sign, because then we're here right now. 
we can continue in our fraction chain with Avogadro's number and get ourselves to particles, which is where we want to end up anyway. So I want one mole of copper to be on the bottom so that it cancels out moles. And in a mole of copper, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Again, why atoms? Well, that's the particle type if we're talking about copper, which is just an element. So now I'm ready. Look, I just have atoms left over, and that's atoms of copper. So here I go. I'm just going to calculate this. I'm typing in 4.25 divided by 63.55, and then I'm going to multiply by, in parentheses, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And that gives me a big number, but it should if I'm calculating for particles. Uh, that gives me 4.02596 times 10 to the 22nd. I can just round to three sig figs because that's what I've started with. Uh, so 4.03 times 10 to the 22nd atoms. That's how many atoms are contained within a 4.25 gram sample of copper. So uh, that one was uh, a little trickier. That's how you convert between moles and mass. But actually, that last problem there was one that has you converting between uh, mass and particles, which is a combination of a mole mass conversion, but also a mole particle conversion. So essentially, what we've done is translate everything into moles and then translate from moles into something else. Now, in our class, we're going to do tons of problems that have you practicing this. Um, and there's a practice sheet, uh, PF4, I believe it is, unless that code has changed, but it's just called Mixed Mole Conversions. Uh, and that is going to be huge, huge help. Uh, make sure you can practice those problems and do them well, uh, because that's going to help you, not just in this unit. You remember, chemistry builds on itself, and so it's going to help you way beyond uh, just this. Thank you.